So, if you watched my last video, you'll see I'm sitting on the exact same screen and I'm picking up right where I left off. And that is talking about who should you go for? Should you go for Oni or should you go for the new Akuma? Now, normally, or not normally, every so often I do like a summoning priority for special summons. I feel now that there's no point in doing that because there's too many different units that do different things within that pool. Okay, so for me to turn around and say I think Summer Elena is top priority. If you're not needing that niche to be filled within your squads, then she's not top priority, right? If you're needing a solid DPS that doesn't have any kind of support functions or whatever, then you're looking at a different batch of units. So instead of doing that, we're going to just talk about who should you go for out of this new Akuma and the man that is on my screen. That might make you think he's one of my favourite characters or something. He's not. I just have never changed that because I'm lazy, right? But who should you go for? Who is the best? Now, I feel that that is a bit of a nuanced question, right? So, first of all, if we look at Akuma again, very quickly because we just did it in a different video. But if we look at Akuma again quickly, you'll see that Akuma is a very hard-hitting DPS who can hit single targets and AoEs. He will hit high numbers with his damage and he's got a trigger. Although it does seem as though it's a one-time use trigger. I will say that. I mean, I, I can't see a scenario where it functioned more than once, so it might, but he can only convert his beads once, so his trigger criteria can only be actioned once, so it looks like he's got a one-time trigger, right? Again, maybe it does function more than once, but I've not seen that happening yet, right? Whereas if we look at Oni, I feel like Oni is different, right? Now, ultimately, it's very hard to give a definitive answer to this question because you really need to use the units for longer, right? You do. But we can talk about their functions and we can talk about what functionally makes Oni different from Akuma. And that might be enough for you to decide which one you want to go for. Now, how Oni differs from the new Akuma, first of all, he has soul damage, right? He has soul damage, which Akuma doesn't. Akuma doesn't really have any kind of special damaging traits, right? Whereas he has soul damage, and soul damage kind of functions in this game a bit like true damage, um, a bit like real damage. It does more, right? You can't negate it the same way that you can negate other damage. Um, I think it's just the wording that they used, soul damage. It, it is essentially true damage, right? Is probably the best way to actually describe it. So Oni has that to him, which true damage to those that don't know generally means that it, it, it's not affected in the same way by things like defense and stuff like that, okay? So whereas non-soul damage attacks can be negated somewhat, not so much with soul damage. Although you I mean, there probably is counters for it. I'm not sure. I can't remember about units in the game that do specific things. But I don't think there's anyone that negates soul damage. There might be. I don't know. But he does soul damage and Akuma doesn't, right? So while some of his numbers on paper might not seem as high, he, remember he has got soul damage, which kind of makes them not comparable. Like, 246% Pure damage, true damage, isn't comparable to 246 standard attack. It's not, right? If that makes sense. When you run both of them side by side, if they had the exact same number, so if one unit had 900% of attack and another unit had 900% of attack but did soul damage, that one with soul damage would hit a lot harder than the one without, right? Hopefully that's making it clear enough for you. So you can't really do a like for like comparison on like numbers in that way. They also have another thing that makes them somewhat similar, although I feel like with Akuma, it's probably going to be easier to achieve. They have got something on them that increases their damage, right? With Akuma, it's his beads, right? With this guy, it's Satsunoiki, right? 
So his Sat Tsuna Wiki increases soul damage by 6% and crit rate by 4% for up to 30 seconds. Stacks up to 10 times. So as long as you keep stacking it, you're going to keep getting that kind of thing, right? And you'll, you'll have it until the end of battle, right? Now, if we look at what that means, 60% additional soul damage, 40%. Aye, 40% additional crit rate. So while he's close in crit rate to Akuma, he's just slightly below his boosted damage, right? So if you look at Akuma again, which I'm not going to bring him up, but if you look at Akuma again, when he's got all of his beads on his C3, that skill is boosted. And I think we worked it out to around about 84%. That one skill is boosted by 84%, okay? Only on the other hand, if you've got all of his Satsu no Iki, Satsu no Iki is not quite the same. Satsu no Iki is all of his skills. So it's everything he does. So it's going to be super, he's going to be boosted. The attack numbers, the damage numbers are going to be boosted. His C1, his C3, they're all going to be affected by that and they're all going to be boosted by that, okay? we look at his passive as well, you can see that he's got similar things. He's got boosts to his kit, boosts to his skill. The only other thing he's got going for him is he's actually got a, a permanent trigger. So he will always trigger, right? So when he does his C3, he will follow it up with an additional attack that is his trigger. If he triggers his own C3, it does more damage than if someone else triggers his C3. So Oni, as a unit, will also do a C3, and his C3 is also penetrating, right? So that's another thing they've got in common. But the thing to me that kind of maybe, maybe becomes your deciding factor of, is he better? Which again, I'm not saying either one of them are better than the other one. I'm just trying to give you, I guess, something to hold on to, to make that decision yourself. Oni does have something that Akuma doesn't have and that is he isn't as selfish a unit okay reason being when you've got his cars and remember I know some of you will go oh god's sake you need these cars but you need both these units cars to get them to function the way that they, they function right but if you've got his cars he does this when the first and third strike of his C3 have a 100% chance of reducing the target's defense by 35% for 15 seconds. So that is, if strike one hits, you reduce the defense by 35%. And if strike three hits, additional to that, you get another 35%. So in total, he can reduce the enemy target's defense by 70%, allowing the rest of your team to cause more damage. So for that reason, he's not as selfish a unit. Okay, I feel like Oni has more of a team-based function, if that makes sense. As in, he is not all about Oni. Which is ironic because the other two Akuma characters are very selfish. Technically, Oni is still Akuma, but he breaks that chain. He's not as selfish as the other Akuma characters because he does bring something to the team. Does he have a higher damage ceiling than the new Akuma, it's too early to say. It's too early to say. Um, I, I'm actually leaning towards yes, right? But again, that's just gut feeling. And the only reason I've got that gut feeling is because there's potential less circumstances where people can negate that damage. Because like I say, it's soul damage, which is like true damage, versus basic damage, which you can have things like buff to defense and all the rest of it for. So we need to wait and see. I feel like over time we will obviously get a proper answer on this. But what I would say is I wouldn't abandon building your Oni just to go and jump to the new Akuma. Right? Don't think that the new shinies come along. The new shiny is going to do better than what I already have. Because ultimately, one, I think it's too early to tell. But two, I feel like both units have their strengths. I feel like because... Oni has soul damage because Oni has his trigger, his trigger is a penetrating trigger which makes it an AOE, he does support the team a little bit, he's got huge damage, he's a great unit, he is a great unit and if we go and look at new Akuma, honestly 
we can say the same thing. We can say he is a great... Where is he? Oh, there he is. There. We can say <coughs> he is a great unit. He is a fantastic unit. If he had soul damage, I would probably say yes. I, I would maybe, probably, possibly put him higher. Um, possibly. Not sold on that one yet. I'm feeling like... Mm, maybe, right? But... If you're asking me definitively right now to say which one of the two of them do I think is probably going to end up being shown to be better over the piece, as long as no one drags me over the coals for saying this, because it is a, a kind of gut feeling, a, a gut reaction, honestly, I probably think we'll end up finding out that it's Oni. For the reasons that I've said, I think that coming out the gate, maybe, your one turn damage might be better with Akuma. Because of how quickly you can get his beads to all pop. Because realistically, if you use your Kami and Vega EX move, you're going to get that free super attack. Almost within the first 15 20 seconds of the battle, you will have him with his full beads, right? So that turn one damage is going to be huge i say turn one right but i really mean turn two because you've, you've got a free super attack but you get what i mean right it's going to be huge and to be honest that's maybe going to be enough in most pvp situations for you to get the win so maybe it will turn out that he's better i just feel like if we actually like look at the ceiling potential for who has got the highest potential to do most damage so that would be on a fight that lasts the entire length of time i think the answer would be oni and overall what he would bring to the team with reducing defense and stuff like that and obviously remember on turn one he's reduced the defense by 70 percent so when he comes back round for turn two he's smacking them with reduced defense by 70 percent so you know it does make a big huge difference to what you're actually doing um i might have wrongly actually said that it's oni's c3 it may actually be c1 let me just double check is it his c1 that does the not as he c3 three strikes it's his c3 so his c3 is the one that does it um so yeah i'm not saying ultimately that i think one of them is worth summoning over the other one I'm saying to you, don't get shiny new toy syndrome. Don't abandon building the unit that you're building just now because this shiny new toy has come along. Don't think, oh my god, why did I invest in Oni? I should have invested, I should have waited and invested in this Akuma. We'll see over a period of time, is Akuma actually better than Oni or not? Again, I think he's got the potential to have that turn two, we'll call it turn two a higher turn 2 damage ceiling potential but I feel like with what Oni brings to the team and all the rest of it over the piece ultimately I think he might be the better unit but we'll see this is gut, gut check moment gut reaction what do I think and that ultimately is what I think I tentatively very tentatively hover the crown over on his on his head but I've, I've not quite let it go yet because we need more time to decide but ultimately they're both great units i don't think you should be disappointed if, if you've got both of them then you spend too much money um if you've only got one of them if you've just sat on like 500 tickets and you've just decided that's it i'm making the decision i'm going to blow all these tickets now and you chose akuma you made a good choice if you chose oni you made a good choice. There's no wrong answer in this situation, to be honest. And we should all just be happy with our units. But anyway, long-winded. I've been Hazink. When am I not long-winded? I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.